in today's video we're going to have a look at this rather wonderful Ford Anglia E4948. Now this belongs to a friend of mine and he's had it for a few years and he's got quite a history with these old side valve Fords. So let's go and have a look at this particularly well preserved example. Now this car was registered in December of 1952 I believe. All the paintwork is original on it and it's just a little sweetheart. It really is a beautiful little car. Um, I know the owner David's got a number of old cars and a bit like me he does like the original the original finish and the, this is a, a cracking example of a preserved car. Um, the E4948 was built in 1948, or that's when it was launched and continued in production until 1953 when the 103 e pop took over which was a sort of a, a basic cut down version uh, no no frills back to basics version of the anglia now this car can trace its roots back to the pre-war days the engine which is the eight horse 933 cc unit uh, dates back way back to the early 30s and the model y and it was still in use on the uk market e494a anglias uh, I know some of the export cars had the 1172 10 horse engine but for these cars in this market it was the 8 horse version that powered it. Now this is just a, a stunning example, They're very, it's a very similar looking car to the Ford Pop 103E but um, we'll just have a quick walk around now and just discuss some of the differences between this and the later Pop. Yeah so at face value these were very similar looking to the later Ford Pop. So let's just have a quick look around and see what some of the differences are. Now it's at the front that the main differences are to be found. Uh, if you know your Ford Pop 103Es, you'll know that they had a painted bumper, whereas the Anglia had a nice chrome-plated C-section bumper. While we're down here, you can see the hubcaps on the Ford Pop. These were painted on the Anglia. They had these stainless centres, but not with the Ford script. Uh, I think some of the pre-war Ford 8s and 10s possibly had the Ford script. But by 1952-53, this is a late 52, um, it was just the stainless steel centres. Uh, note the proper, proper old cross ply tyres as well. And again, another difference between the Anglia and the Pop are these headlamps. Uh, these will be familiar to anyone who knows their E83W vans, sort of the later production late 40s, 50s, E83Ws had these larger lamps with the little eyelid on here. The Ford Pop has a much smaller butler lamp by comparison. Uh, the Fords and E27N tractors also have these. Um, there was an optional extra for those. So, yeah, Anglia, the big lamps, shiny hubcaps, shiny bumpers, different badging of course on the top of the grille, although the grille itself is the same as the Pop. And on the sides of the bonnet, we have these stainless steel trims, which the Pop didn't have. So, there are lots of subtle differences between the Anglia and the Pop, but at first glance, they're all very, very similar. Like I say, this is a very original example. It's just wonderful, the paintwork, everything about it is as untouched as you could expect on a, you know, for a car of this age. For it to have survived so nicely, is a real treat to look at. So thanks to David for letting me wander over and have a good poke over it. It's still on its original registration, which is nice. Um, no one swiped it. If we have a look around here, you can see that's the original lighting. When this was new, that is the only lighting that the car had. At some point in the 1950s, around about 1954, I think, it became a legal requirement to have two stop tail lamps. So that's when these extra lamps were fitted. I was wiping a little dust off there. I hope that's not problem. <laughs> so let's have a quick look inside here. This hinges, see the old ace number plate, proper just as it was fitted in 1952. This hinges like the early minis so that when you carry luggage the number plate is still visible from behind as the boot lids weren't the largest in the world. Um, as you can see here just a simple wooden base and the spare wheel underneath. So you'd put your luggage on there, strap it down, and the number plate would still be visible to the old bill if they were following in their Wolseley 680s and needed to pull you over. Of course there was no ANPR in those days, but you still had to display a visible number plate once the bootlet had been lowered. So let's just have another quick look around in here. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Now, as I said, this is a 933cc side valve four-cylinder engine. 
which first came along in the Model Y in about, was it 1932-33, sometime round about then. And it saw use in the Anglia up until 1953. The export, like I say, the export cars, they had the 1172 in some markets. But for the UK, it was just the 8-horse 933cc engine. Over there, we have a vacuum tank for the vacuum operated wipers. I'm not sure if that's an original fitment. I know the Prefect had a vacuum tank under the front wing. So I'm guessing perhaps the Anglia had it as a standard fitment as well. Nice old style battery as well, so 6 volt, as it should be. Now here, the one concession to modernity is an external fuel, uh, oil filter. Now, it was an optional extra on Fords back in the day to have an oil filter similar to this, a canister oil filter. This one is the old style, but actually has a modern element inside it, just to protect the bottom end, which, with the white metal bearings, is a very good idea, I think, on any engine like this. But, apart from that, it's all very original, just as it should be. Original paint, a bit of oil wiped over here and there, but just as you want it to be. Now, some people say, oh, this should be restored, repainted to make it look just as it should be. But fortunately, in later years, in more recent years rather, there is a move to preserve old cars as much as possible. And uh, fortunately, that's been the case with this one, and it's all the better for it. As soon as you repaint that, you just lose so much of its history. So, fortunately, David, the owner, and I are on a similar, similar song sheet in that respect. So let's have a quick look inside and just have a look at this wonderful old interior. I still have the original floor mats, the original seats, the door panels. And on the A post here, which these are usually rotted out on Ford Pops, Anglias, Prefects and so on. They often rot around here, but fortunately this one's in really nice order. We still have the old shell lubrication sticker on the post there. It just is an absolute gem, this little car. Original headlining. Back seat hardly looks like it's been sat in at all. And the, one of the early owners of the car actually used this to sort of learn to drive in and hopefully well, he tried to take his test in it. I'm not entirely sure he was successful. Let's have a quick sit inside and just revel in this early 1950s Ford interior. Now, another difference between the Ford Pop is very obvious. The steering wheel. This is a lovely affair, which is much simpler on the 103 Pop. It did change throughout the Pop's production, but none of them looked like this. And we have this wonderful old Bakelite dashboard. Now, a friend of mine years ago, well, he's still got it, but years ago we used to go out driving around in his E493A Prefect, and it had a very similar dashboard to this. And compared to that that appeared in the Pop from 1953 onwards, this is a much more attractive looking thing. The 103E has a simple metal dashboard with just a central speedo and a couple of smaller gauges either side, the fuel and the ammeter, I think it was. But the Anglia, the E494A, has this wonderful old Bakelite dash and it just looks fantastic, real 30s style to it. So even though the car was 1950s, everything about it was just rooted in back in the pre-war years. We've still got the original parking lamp. This would have been clipped on the top of the window there once you parked. A couple of little jubilee clips and you attach it to the battery, the 6 volt battery under the bonnet. So that survived with it, that came with it. We've got an old instruction book it's all very nice to see, but this is just proper time warp stuff, you know. This matting, I'm sure you can't buy this anymore, so uh, if this has disappeared from a car being restored, I think it's very unlikely you'd be able to find a, you know, a set of this anymore. You'd probably put carpets in, but it's just not quite original. So uh, obviously some cars need restoring, they've gone to such a state that there's no alternative but to restore it. But when a car is this original, it should really stay just like this, and this is just beautiful. You know. I very happily own and drive this one, I can tell you. So, we shall gently close the door, don't slam. I'll just have a quick look around the front. And just properly soak in this wonderful paintwork. Yeah. You could wax over it, would that make it too shiny? You could linseed, uh, boil linseed oil over it and that dries off and that just gives it a bit of a luster. That's not that's an option with something like this. Um, or you just keep it clean, keep it away from the salt and the damp, and just run it as it is. And uh, I think that's what I'd do with it, to be honest. It's, underneath it's as good as it is on top, I know that. Um, 
early pops have this type of ventilator on the scuttle. The later pops, they just have like a clamshell, uh, presumably a cost saving thing. Let's see if this door's open. There we go. And again, all the original A posts, the sills, everywhere that usually rots on one of these is just looking, you know, it's just as, as it was produced over at Dagenham all those years ago. It's a, just a fantastic car. Have another quick look at the Bakelite dash. Yeah. But back in the day, this was economy motoring, really. Uh, just see if I can remember. The obviously these came out in 1948, and they were priced at 310 pounds. By 1951, that had crept up to 479. And in 1952, when this car was uh, sold, the price had dropped slightly to 443. So. It was the cheapest car in Ford's range at the time, and it was also, I think, the cheapest car in the UK on sale, certainly at its launch. But it's just a wonderful thing. Like I say, the original number plates, the original Ace number plates, uh, so many restored cars have newly made uh, number plates in the wrong typeface, and you can see, you can see them a mile off. Um, obviously, if the plates have gone, you have to get them remade, but if the original plates survive with the car, they just look so much better, I think. And that's what appeals to me about this car so much. It's just a wonderful, a wonderful survivor of the breed. Now, what else was on the market in 1952? Well, uh, Austin would quite happily sell you the Austin A40 Devon, which had been introduced in 1947. That had an overhead valve engine was more advanced than the Ford was. Uh, Morris, you could get the Miner, that had been introduced in 1948 and was a much more advanced vehicle. This was very much a throwback to the pre-war years. But now, with this styling, they're just such an appealing little car. Uh, I could just imagine going for a poodle down to the seaside in this on a Sunday afternoon, picnic on the back seat, you know, and just potter along back lanes, nice and slow. No rush, no need to rush. And you'll get there in the end. And, you know, when people used to go on holiday back in the day, it would take them all day just to travel, you know, 100 miles or so. But they'd stop off, have a picnic, amble along, no motorways, a lot less rushing around, and it was altogether more civilised, I think. Of course, it was, it was relatively slow. I think these only produced about 23 brake horsepower, so it was never going to set the road alight. But certainly now, that's not really the point of owning something like this. I know a lot of people hot rod them which is a shame and that's seen off many of the survivors uh, so to see such an original little car like this is a real treat it's just a, a stunning looking thing i know david's been around pops and anglias most of his life since he was about 14 or 15 i think that's when he got his first one and he used to drive around in various fields and photos of that car appear on my site on the old classic car site and when he saw this one for sale i really don't think he could resist it I can't say I blame him. It's just a wonderful, wonderful original car. It's even good on the roof, where they often rust, where this seal is on the top of the roof up here. They often go there. Pops, if you're looking at buying a Ford Pop or an Anglia, they often rot on the back of the gutter here, on this seam. And you often see stains running down here, and they start rotting out there, where the water gets behind the beading other places to look on one of these if you're planning on buying one or a project car like i say the a pillars they they often rot where the hinges bolt through here so check those carefully you can often lift the door up and down on a weak example because they rot out at the bottom down here and then the sills go and it all gets a little bit unfortunate so at least by looking at such an original car you can see how they should actually look. So sills, where the back wings bolt through, they can get a bit frilly. So when you're actually looking at a car, even if it looks okay from the outside, have a peer underneath and just see, because often when you swing on them or just give them a gentle pull, they're starting to go behind here. You can sometimes see when you peer in through the boot area, have a look at the rear inner arches, and just see where they've gone. Front wings, they go at the back where the mud builds up. 
and they can also go where the bumper irons pop through there. The bulkheads aren't usually too bad, but I have seen them rusted out below the battery. If the battery's leaked and been left to its own devices for 50 years, they can often disappear and rot through under there, so that's worth checking. The grills usually aren't too bad, but just check the very bottom edge because they can rot out. Like I say, the front wings, sills, blah 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 blah. blah rear wings. I mean you can buy some of this in fiberglass now but it's not the same as the proper the proper tin and you just have a look in here. I mean this has still got original paint under here. It's been painted over with some wax oily type substance just to preserve it. But this I mean that's just not been touched at all since 1952 since that paint was put on at Dagenham in late 52 and it's not been touched since. There's no touch-ups on it, there's no filler on it, nothing like that. So come around the back check the boot because the boot lid often rots out at the bottom the rear floor often goes I think possibly condensation builds up on the inside of the boot lid and it runs down can't get out and it just rots the bottom of the boot lid out and same for the boot floor at the back that often goes so check that and like I say just have a look at the gutters because this is quite a tricky area to repair properly if it's gone bad on the gutters it does sort of bring the viability of the restoration into question and again just have a look at the roof where this particular rubber seal sits because it can rust out through there. But, yep, but fortunately none of those problems apply to this wonderful little old car. So let's just go and have a quick look at some of the paperwork that survives for it and fill in some of the history that we know about this particular Ford. There's some of the original paperwork, so what have we got here then? So I've got the original logbook, December 1952. It spent its early years in Leicestershire. And what else have we got in here then? Have we got one of the oh, old text, text discs, discs from 1960. 1960. It survived. And then a, a sale of the car in um, 1960 to Mr. Hall. Of Nuneaton. Yeah, £245 he paid for it. As much as that. <laughs> <laughs> and before it um, was delivered, it seems to have gone off for a bit of a service at uh, Lloyd's service station. Uh, the local Shell garage, Shell yeah. lubrication. Yeah, charging 10 bob for a service. <laughs> <laughs> and the mileage then was what, 39? Is that 7 or 906? Yeah, no, 706. 706. Yes. And it's got 40 something on it now, isn't yes. it? Yes. So, so it's not done a thousand miles since 1960. That's probably due another service soon then. Maybe. Do you think? Maybe. <laughs> another th 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> the car was laid up from um, 1962 until 2014. Somewhere dry, I guess. Dry-ish, yes. Mm. I think the garage did suffer towards the end of end of its career mm -hmm. um, so I think it was laid up for is that 52 years <laughs> which is quite a curious Fine. sum isn't it when it's a 1952 car yeah. and then it was sort of rejuvenated in 2014 dragged mm. out of a out of the derelict garage yeah. um, and basically it was sort of sold on a couple of times people just tinkered about with it and got it running again mm. and made a few uh, <laughs> Undesirable. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't touch this though, did no, they? They didn't no, sort of. Uh, yeah, they didn't so mess around with the paintwork. Survived in essence, yeah. So, which is quite nice. Well, so many of them been done or got out, or people start hot rodding them and then give up halfway through and yeah. chop the axles down and all sorts of things. So what have we got here? In, oh, so he learned to drive in this then. Yeah, didn't the he? guy oh. in uh, Mr. Hall in, in 1960, I think, bought the car to try and take his test and. There's various insurance docu documents in here for, well, for 1960, the car. Yeah. Um, so it was what, eight years old at the time, wasn't it? Yes, yes. But there is also, um, if we keep going a little bit further through all this, <laughs> there's a statement of failure to, to pass. pass the test, test of competence to drive. Yes. And I think, he's, from what I can work out, the, the chap failed twice. <laughs> At which point he kind of called it a day, which is why the car was then put in the garage, right. I think possibly in, in 62. So if he just sold it on again, it probably wouldn't be around now, would it? No, it would probably uh, just pass through no. a few hands and... You know, we've got an application yeah. for renewal of, a, of the vehicle licence and that wasn't... I don't know if that was taken up or not, but yes, it was around yeah. there. In the East Yorkshire Associated Schools of Motoring Coventry Limited. Yes. Ooh, we regret not having heard from you since your disappointment in having failed your driving test. 
Oh dear. We do feel, however, that the knowledge already gained should not be wasted, and that with a little further <laughs> intensive tuition, success can be attained. To encourage you in this respect, we have pleasure in offering you a course of driving lessons at a specially reduced price. That is to say, five lessons for four pounds and five shillings. We sincerely hope that you will take advantage of this offer and look forward to seeing you at our branch at the above address when appointments will be booked to suit your convenience, assuring you of our best attention at all times. P.S. Please bring this letter with you. There we go. <laughs> But that was 1961, that was January 61, so we don't think that he actually tried again then. I'm not sure, it's, it seems to be a bit vague, but then we have in April. In April it's, it's been taxed again. Well, that's Dad's birthday, 25th of April. Your application for a licence has been received, and there's the disc. I think by this time it was wearing a bit thin that he hadn't <laughs> passed. and <laughs> Like pushing water uphill, you know, you get to a certain point where you, you just sort Motor, of... Motoring isn't for everyone, is yes, it? Yes, no. you know, the various... Letters. Well, um, it's just great that all this has survived with it, isn't still it? Still in August '61, but then Ooh, the car was MOT'd. Right. Yeah. 1962. So that was June '62. Yes. Does it, have the, it doesn't show the mileage on these the yeah, early. Yeah, which is, but it would be between the the, the 39,000 and, and the 40,000. 40, whatever so it is now. So gone very far. <laughs> and then suddenly we come into uh, more recent times. Oh, the last thing was a, a petrol receipt, which is, or was it a job? 23rd of June, 62. So that's what, £7, pounds, 9 shillings and Six sixpence. Pence, yes, yeah. whatever that job was. Yeah. But then we sort of... And then it sort of disappeared off the road yeah. then, didn't it? Yes, and then back into service in 2014. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a proper survivor car, isn't it? Yes, and then it's just... it's. Oh, it's gone on from yeah. there with its modern <laughs> modern history. But yeah, nice to have a, have a bit of a history of it. Definitely, definitely. Um, I, I did speak to the recent um, owners of the car since 2014, and mm. they enlightened me as to what they had done to it and right. had not done to it. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we've sorted all that out now. Yeah, splendid. At least it's all survived. Yeah. So, well, thanks. Thanks for giving me the, the guided tour of your lovely little Ford. That's a pleasure. <laughs> I know you've been around Ford for a little while. When did you have your first little side valve Ford? Do you, uh, do you remember? Oh yes, uh, <laughs> 1965. 1965. It was a gift on my 11th birthday. Was Same it? Same model as this. Anglia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I can't think why I've suddenly decided to get another one after all these years. So yes, it's a bit of a calling back to one's youth, I suppose. But. Uh, um, and how did you come to acquire that? Because you weren't very. Well, how old were you at the time? Is it so? eleven? 11. It was, a, it was a birthday present um, from from mum and dad, hmm. um, and actually I was a bit disappointed because I wanted a bicycle. <laughs> but at the time, bicycles were possibly quite expensive because most bikes mm. then would be made in this country. Um, dad worked in a garage or ran a garage, so I think this old Ford Anglia was traded in, and and it was a cheaper option for, than a than a bicycle. But he probably um, <laughs> and you had rude, access to fields and things. Yes, he rude the day because I was probably bothered him for petrol from then on in for <laughs> years to come. <laughs> yes, fortuitously we lived um, out in the country, and next door to us was a ten-acre field that this poor old Ford Angley was hammered around. <laughs> um, lasted about a year before it completely died, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it was some good fun times. Nothing quite like driving a car around a field. <laughs> Is this the one that rolled? Maybe. <laughs> Youthful exuberance. Well, the roof was, was this the one that the roof was removed on, or was that something else? No, that was another another was a, was Back of course, back in the in the in the sixties and seventies these cars just weren't worth any money, so um, you could acquire them and mess about with them without it being any great loss which I suppose means the ones that survive are, are always going to be at a premium mm, especially yeah. in this sort of condition that Definitely. no one's <laughs> hammered around a field or mm. cut the roof off. This is what I, I said this before you know for these cars to survive at some point because due to their age at some point they've passed through the hands of someone who is either a hoarder or a bit nostalgic about yes. it and they just squirrel it away when any reasonable sane person would just sell it on yes. but they just hang on to it for whatever reason yeah. and then they re-emerge re decades later sometimes and yeah. then uh, yeah so yes in, in in hindsight it's probably a good thing that's happened to it that it was yeah away definitely in definitely oh yeah because if the guy had sold it after failing his various driving tests it would have passed through a couple of people's hands and just been scrapped wouldn't it yeah i'm sure yeah okay whenever you're ready so let's hear this mighty beast or 933 cc of it fire into life david's going to do the honors 
And there's a sweet sounding engine if ever I've heard one. Still a little bit cold so a spot of choke required. That's a very sweet engine indeed. What, what, what's the mileage? What's the mileage? 40,118. 40,118 miles. Do you think it's had a reconditioned engine in it? Yeah, it did. It will have done by now, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Isn't that just lovely? That is one very quiet sounding engine. I'm in for a treat, I'm going to go for a little run down the road in it. I used to drive an E83W pickup fairly regularly. But I've never been in one of these before, so that'll be quite nice. cyclists just imagine going for a poodle down the road back in the 50s kind of in sort of a <laughs> amble along on a Sunday afternoon all very civilized oh, we have semaphore Little gem, 1952 Ford Anglia E494A. Thanks very much for letting me have a look around this wonderful little Anglia. They don't survive like this everywhere now, so thanks to David for the guided tour and a little run down the road lovely little car if you've got one of these or if you remember one of these please pop a note into the comments and uh, if you'd like to see more short videos like this on particularly nice survivor cars uh, let me know and uh, like and subscribe to the channel and uh, more videos hopefully very soon thanks for watching